President Muhammad Bukhari, in reaction to repeated attacks by bandits in Niger State and its emperors, has directed the Nigerian Air Force to deploy its fighter jets to check the menace. A statement by his senior special assistant and media and publicity, Garba Shewin Abuja, on Sunday quoted the president as describing the repeated attacks, which led to the loss of several lives in the affected communities, as a disaster for the nation. The deployment of air power is to support troops and policemen deployed to the difficult terrain to counter the menace of the attackers operating in a forest area bordering Kaduna, Niger and Zamfara state. Will this be of any help? My guests are here uh, from the last session. We still have Leonard Ebute. Thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. And then we have Barrister Josephine. Thank you very much Thank for coming. Thank you for having in. me. All right. Um, the question is, is this a little or a lot too late? Let me start with you. Uh, well, it's a welcome development. We can't say it's, it's a little too late because at least he's responding to the cries of Nigerians now and he's doing something. Okay. Your thoughts? Well, any, any form of assistance in terms of security is better than the subsisting situation. I mean, so um, is it enough? That's a different question to, to ask. Is it something good? Is it a step in the, right, in the right direction? Yes, I mean, this is a country that is, the security apparatus is overwhelmed. There are, what, 600,000 policemen in Nigeria? Um, Nigeria is 92 million hectares of land. That is like one policeman to 154 hectares of land, or one policeman to 350 people. That's the ratio. So we are grossly under policed. Therefore, every form of internal conflict, the army has to support. Now the entire armed forces is maybe what, two, 300,000? So the ratio of security personnel to land mass and to population is way below the global standard. And so it makes sense, therefore, that the army, the armed forces, must be called into internal conflict to support the activities. But of the is this a good thing, really, considering the fact that these people are not supposed to be having, from what we know from the Constitution, having this consistent interaction with the civilian population yeah so right now you cannot describe insecurity any in any shape or form particularly the manner of insecurity happening here is closer to insurgents it's actually the lawyer is here she's probably going to clarify that more it is not this is not just banditry and stealing these are people that are taking territory these are people that are um, in a sense, colonizing national resources like gold and so on in those areas. So in that sense, it becomes a little yes, bit different from a rare policy issue. Yeah. So there is That's a pseudo reality. war happening in, in those Nigeria. in that terrain. And when you also look at the level of equipment that these people bring to the theater of war, then you do realize that perhaps this is just a little bit outside of the scope of the Nigerian police. Yes. This could not have been the intention of the lawmakers when they were creating that job description between the police and the armed forces. Okay, the, the president, is, um, there's always this um, statement issued when disaster happens. A lot of persons says it's, it's protocol, is something that needs to be done, and this time around is describing it as a disaster uh, for the nation, uh, especially for the affected communities. What more aside this kind of rhetoric do you think should be occupying the presidency's um, attention at this time? Um, instead of um, statements issued sympathizing with the reality and this deployment, wouldn't it be a bit more um, intense and appreciated if there are other reactions, and when I mean other reactions, that's left to you. Well, I, I think the president has not actually done what he's supposed to do with regards to this curbing the insurgency as he's supposed to have done. It has, I, I think I remember the quotation from uh, the daughter of late uh, General Bacha, who says that if insurgency persists for a period of time, is because of the failure of government. You understand what I'm trying to say? That if it has been handled decisively, 
without any form of sentiment whatsoever. To a degree, it would have discouraged the, the act of the terrorists, that they have even gone further. They are not putting roadblocks, putting their flags wherever they can. And the spate of killings that we are having now, in this year, what, what we've heard about the killings, I think it seems it's, to be intensified. It's we even have over cases now. The amount of the, the, the casualties we've had now, they are more than the casualties that, that happened between Iran and America that almost resulted into third, uh, World War III, if, I, if, 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 I, if I'm allowed to say that. And what we have, we've heard from the president, is basically statements. Okay, the, talking about the increasing cases, in Plateau State, there seems to be some sort of a resurgence because in the last uh, fortnight or so, we've had a couple of communities attacked. And at least as at last count, if you add the two attacks, it's up to 20 people that have died in Plateau State so far. We're not talking about what's happening in Bonu State and the likes. And there are people who are saying that we should consider um, what the Southwest governors have taken up, yeah. that's the amotek. Yeah. Um, what's your take on that? Is that something that should be considered, considering it looks like, I mean, yes, you've ordered a strike. Is that enough? What more can the people do to protect themselves? And is it an option for them? So I think there is um, an unnecessary, it may be necessary, I don't know, but there is a lot of noise about amotek, as if it's anything new in Nigeria. The North have had all kinds of police, local police, since forever. I grew up in the North. When the Agatu crisis happened in Benue State, it took the communities mobilizing themselves into some kind of vigilante to, 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 to stem the attack and prevent it from reoccurring. You see, the right to life is sacrosanct. Mm. And to the extent that my life is threatened, I will do all that I need to do to prevent the aggressor. Okay, so this reaction from the south, it, it, it maybe the scale of the coordination is what is making it look scale. new. Otherwise, scale, communities yeah. have always deferred to self-protection in Nigeria. The basic security you have, even in Lagos, are your area boys. It's not the police. And this is more a reflection of the realities that needs to happen in our land for us to have security. The government apparatus is overwhelmed. They react to issues. They react too late. They react too little. And therefore, it is incumbent upon communities to make every effort to protect themselves. And any reasonable government will support that effort. If I may add to you that, know. by the way, Nigerians are already protecting themselves. We are basically our own government, provide our own water. We do our own, uh, Absolutely. We, we get rid of our own waste. We have our neighborhood security guards. Because like he has mentioned, we are not policed enough. And then there is this issue of lives and properties are no longer safe. We don't even know where there will be, where this next strike will take place. So the issue of Amote Kung being uh, is causing so much Olabalu, it's, it doesn't really, it, it holds no water. And particularly for the people of the Middle Belt. I grew up in Plateau State. I went to University of Jos and all that. There are communities in Plateau States that insurgents or bandits have not only settled in those communities, but have renamed those communities. And Even is, currently? Currently. And there is research to support this. There are investigative journalists that have done this. It's published work. It's indisputable. It, so, and this is, so this, is, this is not just a resource war like it is painted sometimes. A change, a, a lifestyle, herdsman's lifestyle versus farmer lifestyle. Now the herdsmen are settling. And that's against the whole tenet of nomadism that is supposed to be the problem. So you see, unless we dimension the problem properly and we, we see it for what it is and we allow society to evolve those solutions on a need basis. And you see, any form of security apparatus that can work, and this is my opinion, must be set in a cultural context. Mm. How the Igbos think 
is fundamentally different from how a typical plateau long-term man thinks. And so setting up the kind of security system that can work in that environment must be linked to the culture of the place, must have some semblance of alignment with even the topography and the intelligence mechanism of that place. But it, it is it, time, it is, okay. therefore, in my opinion, for not just state policing, but for local community, community policing. Community policing. Community but but there, there seem to be some sort of resistance from the federal government. Yes. If we were to go by the statement point. issued by the um, Attorney General, yeah. uh, he's saying that there needs to be some sort of um, um, constitutional, constitutional backing to no. these moves. Uh, you said it's been around for uh, a long time. So what options are there? Because some people are describing because statements by the president as mere grandstanding. The problem with the federal government statement is that they just like grabbing, they just like to grab, grab power. They want to just be in control of everything. Something is wrong in the country. Nigeria is not at its, at its peaceful state. So we mustn't use the same, uh, who defined madness as doing the same, doing something else in the same way and expecting a different result. Now we must fashion out a system to curtail this, these occurrences. So the, the issue of um, what the Attorney General said about it not being constitutional, he, he, it's, it's funny to me. Uh, and I think- It's and funny I, because we've had civilian JTF before they were, they were merged with the Nigerian Army. Still they active. were on their own, they were hunters. Still they were active. Uni, when they, were, they, they had uniforms. Before they were met, okay. they were his, his bar police, who I heard recently arrested a Nigerian police officer. Do you think this might work better if the president, as against um, these statements being issued, work in collaboration with the state government to see if there is a way that community policing can be localized without necessarily um, making it look like you know this grand scale that's being done by the region? Is, is it, it possible? The, yes, my, they see the attorney general statement for me. Um, I'm sorry, which I'm not a, a legal practitioner, but the law is set in logic. Before the law establishing, before the act establishing the Nigerian police force, there was a natural law granting rights to life. The rights to protect myself and my family with any, from, with any means possible against an unfair aggressor. It's sacrosanct to human yeah, nature. You, you, you said and that so, what, what, what so, I'm looking so, at is yes. the, if it can be done, um, strategically from the presidency so that, you know, all these arguments as to... Exactly. This is why our law is called the common law. It is an aggregation of what is common, culturally common. And so if by virtue of the evolution of our society, we are beginning to find new ways of alleviating the security situation in the country. It is therefore, at this point, the responsibility of, of the Attorney General me, to say, how do I police around this effectively? Okay, let's, let, let's get started. Let me just say this. If he feels that what was done was not constitutional, it's very simple. Why don't you amend the constitution? Allow this thing to happen because it is, it is necessary for people to be able to protect their, themselves it is absolutely necessary. All right, final thoughts in 30 seconds, 30 seconds, because we're out of time. Um, okay, let's start with you. The president of Nigeria for a while has been disappointing us, Nigerians, with regards to how he reacts to all these acts of aggression. His recent pronouncement to other airstrike Albeit, it also has illegal implications, but it's, it's a step, step in the right direction. Yep. And let's hope this will curtail at least to a, to a degree what's happening. Up what's out. happening, yes. I would, I, would, I would commend the handlers and the managers of, of our motekun, and I will encourage all communities to take protection of their lives and communities seriously, to seek legislation that will legalize their approach to, to such self-protection. And I will caution the federal government to stop disregarding um, the people, to take them seriously. That is what representative democracy is about. All right, thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. your thoughts and your time on the program. Thank you.
All right, and thank you for staying with us thus far. We'll take our plus report now, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. Do stay with us. It was a visit expected to show solidarity with the Christian community in Adamawa State. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, described the security situation in the country as challenging, saying in the last few years, it has metamorphosed into several hydra-headed monsters. Several years ago, we started with the issue of Boko Haram restricted to the northeast. As we were making tremendous progress with Boko Haram in the northeast, issues of banditry started in the northwest. In the north central part of the country, the issue of intense farmer hardest crisis. Another dimension just unleashed itself. We were not used to the, uh, to, to, to the violent crime of kidnapping. In the last one decade, it was too alien to us. But now it has become a major security concern. And that is prevalent across the divides, across the different regions of this country. So you can see that the security challenges that is confronting us as a, as a nation is multi-headed. You deal with one, another one erupts. Mr. Mustafa described the death of Reverend Lawan Andimi, who was recently killed by Boko Haram terrorists as unfortunate, expressing optimism that a group will soon be dealt with. We thought we had gotten over and Boko Haram had been degraded. Substantially it had. But we've seen a new version with a lot of vision, I mean uh, viciousness in some of the happenings. We acknowledge that. We are not totally out of the woods yet. The government is putting up a lot of things to deal decisively with that. It's a contention, there is a contention for the soul of our country. And this is where our collective resolve as a people is very, very important. The Adamawa State can chairman Bishop Stephen Mamza while thanking the federal government for the show of love and concern, called on both Muslim and Christian faithful to do more, especially through naming and shaming crime. Bishop Mamza said this will go a long way in telling criminals there is no hiding place in God's sanctuaries. We know the members of the Boko Haram claim to be working for Islam and on behalf of Islam. But we also know that this is not the thinking and also the belief of Muslims in Nigeria. And we also want at all the times that the Muslim community should also continue to disown such people. So that even we as Christians, if we have such people that are bringing a lack of peace within the community that happen to be Christians, we also will be able to disown them. If the Muslim community are able to come together, the good Muslims and the good Christians are able to come together, we support the security, we support the government in order to bring about peace in our country, we can achieve it. Hmm. When I think about Leah Sharber's family, words dry up in my mouth, honestly. Even if she's released today, this government has failed her. I say this with conviction because I remember President Buhari's words to her biological family on October 3rd, 2018. His words, and I quote, I convey my emotion, the strong commitment of my administration and the solidarity of all Nigerians to you and your family, as we will do our best to bring your daughter home in peace and safety, end of quote. That was over a year ago. In my opinion, it is inexcusable that the girl remains in captivity in spite of the public outcry and continued media pressure. What can we do as ordinary citizens? I guess it's to ask and continue to ask until some answers are given but who will respond when the government of the day believes it is more important to reintegrate Boko Haram terrorists than to secure the freedom of those who continue to be held in captivity? On a final note, and this is to those who idolize her and make her only a mere symbol of religious grandstanding, please be reminded that she is just a girl, a young Nigerian child whom we all 
when we all have failed. And that's my take tonight. Thank you for watching today's conversation. We're back again tomorrow. But until then, you can watch previous episodes on Plus TV Africa YouTube channel and share your thoughts in the comment section. Bye for now.